Hey guys, and welcome to Dr. K Explains It All. I'm Dr. K, a GP and a doctor from London, UK, and I create health-related videos and tips for you guys. If you're new here, why not check out my other videos and consider subscribing? But if you've been here before, welcome back and let's move on to today's video. If you've ever had one before, then you know exactly just how itchy, irritating and painful ingrown hairs and razor bumps can be. And they just don't look very nice and many people can find them embarrassing. Ingrown hairs occur when hairs curl up and grow back into the skin. It's more common in black people because our hair tends to be curly. Curly hair is more likely to bend and re-enter the skin, especially if it's been shaved or cut at an angle. Ingrown hairs can also be caused by a buildup of dead skin cells, which block the hair follicles and trap it underneath the skin. Being black, we're also more likely to get a type of ingrown hair called pseudofolliculitis more commonly known as razor bumps. Razor bumps are also caused by hairs that have become trapped underneath the skin and the hair follicles becoming inflamed. A lot of people may wonder which method is the best method that guarantees no ingrown hairs. Is it shaving, waxing, plucking, tweezing, threading? Which one? The correct answer is none of the above. <clears throat> they can all cause ingrown hairs and your results are more likely to be dependent on the skill of whoever's doing the hair removal than the specific method that you choose. So make sure that if you are going to see someone, you do your research and you check their recommendations to make sure that they're good. My personal opinion though is that shaving is the worst method for ingrown hairs. That's because when you shave, you cut the hairs bluntly at an angle and when they grow back they're more likely to curl in and cause ingrown hairs. I would say that using hair removal creams or waxing tends to be better and that's because the hair that grows back tends to be finer and less likely to become trapped underneath the skin. Then why not consider more permanent methods of hair removal like laser hair removal or electrolysis? Both these methods are more permanent and offer more of a solution than those previous alternatives. If you're interested, then I do have a video all about electrolysis in which I discuss with an electrologist whether it's the best hair removal method. And I'm going to link that video somewhere around here. So go ahead and check it out. First thing is to take a break. Give things a break and try and space out gaps in between your hair removal sessions. As tempting as it might be, try not to pick or scratch at the spots. This will only encourage infection as well as scarring and pigmentation problems afterwards. And in most cases, especially if it's quite mild, that's all you need to do. And most cases of ingrown hairs tend to settle on their own, usually within a week of doing those things. Another thing you can do is to wear looser clothing. You need to give the area enough room to breathe not allowing sweat to build up or tight clothing to rub and chafe further causing inflammation. Wearing loose and breathable clothing like loose trousers or shorts, maxi dresses, etc. is best. Number three. So once the hair emerges above the skin and you can see it, then carefully and gently using a pair of sterile tweezers, you can gently free it up and loosen it. Do not, however, pluck it out completely because what will happen is that the skin will heal up again over that area and you'll get further ingrowns. Number four, you can also gently exfoliate the area to remove any dead skin cells and encourage any hairs that might be trapped to become free. A gentle exfoliating loofah or chemical exfoliants containing glycolic acid can be used for this reason. If you are using any exfoliating gloves, scrubs or products, be really gentle. You do not want to be too abrasive because that might cause further problems. I will put links in the description box to specific products, so make sure to check those out. If the spots look particularly red, inflamed or angry, then you can also use a mild steroid cream. These are often available from your local pharmacist without the need for prescription. They are very mild and they can just be applied directly to the spots themselves for no more than seven days. If after you've been using the steroid creams for seven days and you don't notice a difference, 
or the spots look worse, then I would suggest that you speak to a doctor. The final tip that I would give is to make sure to keep the skin well moisturized. That's because when your skin is dry, it's more likely to become inflamed and less likely to withstand all the effects of hair removal. So making sure to use regular moisturizing creams is a good way of adding moisture back into the skin to get rid of ingrown hairs. My final warning is do not be tempted to apply ingredients that contain essential oils, particularly tea tree oils, lemon, baking soda, or any other kind of harsh abrasive chemical to get rid of ingrown hairs. Tea tree oil in particular, although it's marketed as a skin product and it's good for the skin, is actually not. Essential oils can be very irritating to the skin and cause inflammation. So I would really avoid things like that. These very often will make the situation worse. I do have a video where I talk about so-called skin ingredients that are actually bad for your skin. And again, I'm going to link that up here. So go ahead and check that out. That's all I've got for today. And I hope you found this video on preventing ingrown hairs helpful. If you have any questions, comments, then drop them below and make sure to like, comment and subscribe. I'll see you in my next video, guys. Stay safe and stay well. Bye, guys.